Hello, my name is Tine. In this video I will replace that motor on the mill and make additional cooling modification. Someday I want to start the mill and the AC fuse just hit out. I quickly remember that a few days before make some steel pieces and drill big holes with low RPM. That was hard job for the motor, but it did the job and still work. Next time when everything was cooled down, it won't start anymore. So all I can do is remove the motor and locate the problem. That motor really got lot of working hours. I buy a used mill, but only I use two pairs of brushes. Basically that's the first machine where I ever need to replace brushes from wear. First brushes didn't have the protective spring into, so it become too small, get out of position and damage the collector and the rotor. So I must turn the collector on the lathe and replace the brushes, and the motor run for a year or two more, but this time it must be something bigger. Of course I firstly disassemble the motor, turn the collector on the lathe just to get my surface and replace the brushes, but without luck this time. There's still nothing wrong with the brush holder, magnets are in its place, and boot bearings are fine, so the problem only can be in a rotor. I try to measure resistance between coils, but I don't know much about rotor wiring, so I just search for some short course or strange resistance, but all the resistance is pretty much the same, but I can visually see some problem on coil insulation. I got one experience with that kind of brushed motor from the job. When the motor broke we sent it to rewind the rotor, replace the brush holder and the brushes, but the motor never worked ok. Little current was so high that it heated up unnormally in a minute of running, so on the end we need to buy a new motor. I contact a guy who rewinding motors and tell me that it cost about 100 euro to rewind the rotor, but also tell me that he can't guarantee that the motor will run good after rewind, because if the motor was overheated too much, the magnets can lose its power and needle current will increase. After that call I just assemble the motor back together and search information to order new one. Well, that's another story. Motor is without any single information. Here on machine manual it says it's a 108 ZYT motor. But on machine it says that the motor is 750 watts. After hardly find some information on internet, dimension and power doesn't match with my motor. Then find a label under the motor cover that it's 95 ZYT motor. That brand doesn't exist anymore, just like store where the machine was bought. So all I can do is searching for the motor by other brand. Here in Europe we got at least 5 brands which sell totally same mills. I tried to contact few of them, but they don't want to sell me the motor without telling him code of their machine. No, they won't sell the motor for competition brand. Strange. After about a week of searching on internet I found the one and only store in Germany who sells spare parts for optimum brand. I kindly asked seller to compare the dimension with my motor. That's it he say, and I can finally order new motor from optimum. This motor is marked as 93 ZYT, so not the one marked in the manual and not the one marked under the cover, but it has the same specification as my motor, also position number from manual is the same, so I order it with two spare pairs of brushes and shipping cost me about 240 euro. Motor look the same as mine, dimension all right is just a bit shorter, but it's 100 watt more powerful as original motor. But by that mess with data, I don't believe any information from this Chinese machine. First of all, I connect the motor and machine and try to make a start. Motor run without problem, but before I mount a pinion on shaft, I need to repair it. Because taking it from old motor wasn't easy, so I will turn a bit of chamfer on the lathe and with file grind the edge of every teeth. When install pinion on a new motor, I put a nut under the shaft, so the bearing not suffer from punching. If it become too hard, we can help with a bit of heat but not too much, otherwise heat will transfer to a shaft, it will extend and we do nothing. When the pinion is secured with the C-clip I mount the motor on plate, but gently tight only one screw, so I can set the position of the motor onto the machine. I see that second gear is pretty dirty, so I take it off and clean them too. That gear is weak point of that machine, I already broke it years ago. Then I buy on eBay that one from Pertinex, and also that one from the transmission. It's a bit louder, but I just don't know for them. When the position is set, I tighten all the motor screws. I need to do a bit of cable management, and now I can try the motor. It's run, but in wrong direction, so I just reverse the motor cables. Then I measure the current. Little current is less than 2 amp, which is good. 
but that motor controller check RPM via optical sensor on the spindle, and if you try to stop the motor, current will increase, so the motor try to hold stable RPM. We can see that the current drives fast up to 10 amp. There's a bit less RPM than with an old motor. Old motor was declared up to 190 volt DC. New motor is 230 volts DC, so check the voltage. I measure about 160 volts on max RPM. So I open the electronic box where is the regulator which got three trimmers to set up lower RPM, highest RPM and acceleration. Low RPM is fine, so I just set a bit trimmer for high RPM. If I set it to about 220 volts, it spins with about 3200 RPM, which is too much for that spindle. So I set the max voltage to about 190 volts, which means about 2700 RPM on spindle. I also decrease acceleration just a bit. If need half of second more to start, we'll not notice, but the brushes and electronic will be grateful. I leave machine running with full RPM for about an hour, so the brushes fit the collector and check the motor temperature. But there was no problem because motor runs without any load. So the motor is mounted and set, everything worked fine. The whole mill running much smoother and quieter than with the old motor. So all I need to do is mount the cover. But when I look the cover it seems some kind of tight for a motor. It just got a few tiny grooves from air from backside. We can also see a lot of brush dust here on top. And when I run in mill for a few hours, the entire cover become hot, so I can only imagine the temperature of the motor. The old motor got cooling fan perpendicular, so it only mix air inside of the motor. Well, that optimum one got fan blades at an angel, so it suck fresh air from the bottom and push out hot air in the top of motor. So I'll make a little modification to give a bit more fresh air to motor. I just bought a simply thermostat and a 120mm fan. That little thermostat will control the fan and also give me information about motor temperature. After a bit of study where to mount the fan, I decided to mount it on top, so the fan just suck out the hot air. I think there will be more efficient if we push the fresh air in, but in that case I can't mount the fan on top, because motor itself blow the hot air out on top. Firstly I try to connect fan and thermostat, it's really easy to set for cooling or heating, and it's do the job just good. The fan is just about 5mm bigger than the top of cover, so I can just make a hole and screw fan onto cover. But I want it to look nice, not only functional, so I printed a flange to mount fan onto. First of all I centered the flange to cover and make holes and treats to mount it on. Then I marked the circle and cut it out. Then I mount also the thermostat on its place. I make a few additional holes, so there are no any single wires can be seen from outside. I make wire short as can, so soldering inside is a bit more difficult, but I add a connector to power supply cable, so when taking off the cover just unplug the connector and freely remove everything. Now I need to mount the thermistor somewhere onto motor, and that read for ground wire will be just fine. So I'll quickly make a holder which hold the thermistor close to motor and also hold the motor cable on its place. Of course I need separate power source for the fan. When I buy that mill I quickly install light into frame, it's got also separate switch. That installation is already on halfway, so I just use that source to run the cooling system. I make a short wire with connector and push it through the holes into frame, then make connection to the light wires. Now I can attach motor, plug the motor wires and tie the motor plate on its position. Now I can attach the cover, connect the power supply connector and tie the temperature sensor next to motor. I didn't screw the fan yet, so I can manage the cables inside of cover, so they don't touch somewhere to the motor. 
Now I take protective grid and screw it together with a fan to flange. But there's still miss something. Just for better look I draw and printed a fan cover. I don't want to make grills on that cover, because heat will sooner or later deform them. And now it's time for a test. I just turn on the motor and let it run without any force, so the temperature rises slowly. When it reaches 30 degrees the fan starts running, and the temperature very quickly drops to 29 degrees, when the motor is still running. Later I change the settings so the fan turn on at 28 degrees and turn off at 27 degrees Celsius. After a bit of testing cooling work really well. It suck fresh air to the cover grills on back side, go through the motor and hot air blow out on top. I think that's it for today. I'm happy with the repair motor run really nice and hold it also motor is happy with its cooling upgrade and it will last for a while. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe if you like and see you next time.